Hey guys, it's your favorite Donabot here today, and today we have an aquatic versus battle today. Legiacris, the abyssal variant, or subspecies, excuse me, versus Slatin from Pacific Rim. I actually thought about this because I'm like, yo, I need an aquatic battle real quick. What's my what's my go-to? Now I was thinking like, okay, yo, let's use Legiacris, right? Now I was thinking, what's another good one? And then, you know, thinking about Pacific Rim, Slatin came to mind. So without further ado, Let's actually begin here, and we will be going based on their regular stats, and then we will be using their more, I guess, Slatcher's more obscured um, scaling as well here. So, to start off with Slatcher, the best I can actually give him is possibly, and again, maybe, towards a island, if not country level scale. Now, this is depending on how you really think the Kaiju scale to this um feat in pacific rim uprising where this these uh, modified kaiju jaegers or whatever were able to open a portal which was apparently calc to be able to use continental or country levels of energy depending on where you get it from and considering the fact that slattern is a category five he should scale above many category fours as well and possibly scale to Raiju, who, well, eh, eh it, it, it's very interesting because, you know, Raiju actually scales to um, the Mach 5 and Mach 6 Jaegers, while Slattern was able to fight against Striker Eureka, who is another Mach 5 Jaeger. So it does depend on how you really want to put it here. But again, I do think that Striker is lesser than even someone like Guardian Bravo in terms of its advancedness and combat capability, considering the sheer fact that the Kaiju are meant to be stronger. Now, again, there is the consistent city level scaling within the Pacific Rim um, verse here, with having characters like, whatchamacallit, uh, even Trespasser, excuse me, being able to not only cause a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake, but being able to. Eh, actually been able to withstand three nukes before dying so again category fours above that category fives way above that so the best i can get him is island level but again with his extremer ends he can get to country or continental so there you have it now next up we have legia chris and this is the abyssal variant now why is it the abyssal variant well it's because again this variant isn't really looked at and again i know i'm probably saying variant variant excuse me once a subspecies but again it's kind of a habit, so just bear with me here. So Abyssal Geocris is actually live in the much deeper depths of the Monster Hunter Sea, which is actually one of the more dangerous seas in fiction if you understand what's in there. And believe it or not, they're actually known to fight against Nakarkos and Kadeus, two of the most powerful sea-dwelling Elder Dragons. And this is important because, again, Nakarkos is actually able to go on land for a certain amount of time and being able to rip apart and eat other monsters to the point where apparently it makes Devil Joe look like a pale imitation. I, I think that says a lot here. Now, we do have some, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, guidebook showings where it does have, you know, Galavinus parts, Brachidiosis parts, um, Uragon parts, and apparently, if it has a Legiacris head, that's apparently a rare, um, I guess you could say a rare case, which is actually pretty impressive here. Now, this is important because Brachidiosis does have a decent amount of scaling. Now, if you guys saw my Raging Brachidiosis versus Zilla Jr. video, you should know that a Raging Brachidiosis could easily get to Elder Dragon level, which is around those large planetary domains here. Now, again, considering Legiacris is actually able to fight against Nakarkos, and it's very possible it does prey upon them, considering, again, it is known to dive down there and, well, live at those depths, being able to successfully live at those depths as well. Okay, I was subspecies if you're not successfully you know living down there meaning that their power level is elevated to the point where they can fend off Nakarkos's mm -hmm. and even Kadeus's and considering the sheer fact Kadeus's are known to accidentally sink islands this would easily put Legiacris around the island levels at a bare minimum however due to the sheer fact that elder dragons do scale to each other and Nakarkos is a much higher tier of elder dragon 
this would actually put him around the multi-continental to moon levels even getting him to large planetary based on him scaling to other elder dragons like guys magorn malzeno nergagante who are able to well fight against beings that can create um black holes via their dragon energy so with that being said here Legiacris should be around the large planetary domains and he should be relativistic considering there are light speed scaling for a lot of the characters and for monsters and people in monster hunter so believe it or not let's talk about this right now again i know a lot of people think that monster hunter monsters are somehow fodder because they die to humans with normal weapons even though despite that we actually have confirmation that our characters in the game are just not human entirely. They're enhanced. They're like a hybrid amalgamation of dragon and human, apparently. Yeah, because apparently the first Wyvarians were the first species on Earth, and they interbreeded with humans, which would give our hunter a bit of a higher status. Albeit, over the years, though, the Wyvarian DNA does kind of like die down because you know of all the crossbreeding and stuff here in genetics so with that being said here um who do i think wins this yeah i'm gonna give it to legiochris with absolutely no difficulty at all not only does he have better hacks with his electrical capabilities he is much more consistent than slattern here slattern's best thing he has is his strength and well so i can't probably can't even say his strength with legi because one shots him right his best thing is really his size and his weight and that's not going to be enough for this fight here slattern's not going to be able to withstand his um electrical attacks here now you might say well you know he was able to survive striker eureka's bomb now understandable it is a thermonuclear detonation but again slattern barely survived that and was heavily injured from that in order to well <laughs> for gypsy to get the final killing blow here and even then striker would have won that if he didn't call for help which again is the worst part about that showing he was the first category five and yet all striker did was literally disable his limbs within a matter of moments of him being in close quarters combat that is not a good showing and Legiochris is much faster and way more agile than um, Slattern here in every single way. Fights Elder Dragons, fights other monsters, is a rival to Rathalos on a regular basis when they both inter... Well, I guess you could say both interact over coastal prey. There is no reason why Legiochris should lose this. In all honesty, he should one-shot. But hey, that's going to be all for today, you guys. Please comment down below. Comment, like, and subscribe, and share with your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you guys have a blessed day.